probably the biggest problem in landscape drawing that people encounter and have a lot of questions about is how to get leaves to look like leaves. The thing that most people do when they're starting out is just try to draw every single leaf. And that's really just not possible if you don't want to drive yourself completely crazy. So in the background, I would recommend leaving it as basically shape and tone and using the side of whatever your utensil that you have, um, you know, pencil, charcoal, whatever, and leaving it very, very simple. In the middle ground, I think you can get slightly more complex with it. Um, I'm not to say that you can't put a lot of detail in the background because you can, but um, you want to sort of increase the amount that you try to get across in the middle ground areas. And the first thing you do is you get some tone down. You could do this effectively with just one solid tone over any particular area. Um, I think it would be more effective probably to break it down and do about three tones. Um, either the white of the paper, uh, a light gray and a dark gray, or three different grays, whatever you want to do, um, it'll probably work out. So look at whatever it is that you're drawing, create some tone, and lay that down wherever you think it should go. It doesn't have to be perfect. It, stay loose with it. Um, don't really worry too much about mark directions. Don't worry about smoothing anything out. Just get material down on the paper. That's the main thing. The thing that's going to make this really look like actual leaves is the texture that you go go with. And you know you have a little bit of paper texture to work with, but texture basically is any kind of mark repeated often enough and close together. And that texture is going to hopefully come from the type of tree that you're looking at. So what I like to do is do a little practice shot right next to what I'm going to draw, um, especially if I'm just practicing in the sketchbook. Um, or if I'm working on a finished piece, I'll bring my little sketchbook with me and try out different textures um, on a separate page. And then when you go in, you just start repeating that texture. And ideally it should come from the motion that the tree has. If there's a lot of wind, you can change the angle of the texture to kind of uh, get the get it to seem like there's wind in the trees. Um, if the if they're sort of like pine clusters, maybe the texture goes kind of up and sort of bursts outward. Um, here I have a sweet gum texture and it all kind of like hangs down and, and forks out like fingers um, and kind of goes in these sort of linear patterns and, and clusters. So that's the way that I'm choosing to apply texture for, for this particular tree. Ideally, you would change the sort of texture for every single tree that you draw within a landscape because you're trying to simplify what you see and let your viewer's brain and your brain fill in the rest of the detail. So by using a texture, you're making use of that tendency for the brain to synthesize and try to make sense of what it sees. And if you go with the generic texture and it's the same for everything, it'll get overly simplified. So that kind of texture is something that will pretty much work if I dropped it right into the middle ground of a piece. For the foreground, you want to get even more specific and, you know, I like to think of it as simplify specifically. So I'm going to draw this little azalea bush that you might see in the right corner of the frame. And I'll start out with a quick armature of where the branches go and then lay a little bit of tone down and start adding these little bursts of curved leaves. And notice they burst a little bit differently than the texture um, that I did for the middle ground. I'm not drawing every single closed leaf. I'm just kind of doing these little hook marks so that I don't have to sit there and draw each individual leaf. If I draw each individual leaf, everything will start to look homogeneous and flat. Um, but if I mix in tone, 
and these repeated marks that follow the motion of how these leaves grow, then I'll create something that's a little bit more workable in terms of getting a drawing complete um, or completing a sketch. Now, if you're doing like a 20 minute sketch or something like that, and you have to get a whole, um, you know, nine by 12 area filled, you might not even have time to do this. You might have to do use even less um, texture, focus more on tone and shape 